If you're under 13 years old, you must make sure you have your parents or guardians permission to watch this video. The content in this video is family friendly, but data may be collected by YouTube for advertising purposes. Hello and welcome back to another Minecraft Let's Play video by me, Foxy No Till, here on my Super Chunk Block survival server place that I play with my patrons on this modded version of the Bedrock Edition of Minecraft, which uses add-ons. Now, in my last live stream, I finished, with the help of a couple of friends, I finished this witch spawner, mob spawner, squid spawner, fish farm. Now we also thought we could maybe make it a passive mob farm as well by adding grass up here, but sadly we forgot this is an ocean biome and passive mobs don't spawn in an ocean biome unless they are, of course, squid, dolphins or fish. So. It's working really, really well. We put a roof over half of it so that half of it is always dark, which means if we're in the right place, the witch spawner is always active. And it means that we always get a good amount of hostile mobs. Now at night time, we get a full amount of hostile mobs. And it also means that during the day, we still get squid spawning as well. So this is still an ink farm as well. It is a super duper multi-purpose mega farm with a trident killer underneath which is basically doing a really, really good job of destroying everything, giving us lots and lots of XP. This is my little AFK spot. Now, this AFK spot doesn't activate the witch spawner, but if I go up on the ladders, it does. But if I just want AXP, I just stay down here. AXP? XP. But look at all the stuff. Got loads of stuff in there. All of these chests are full. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's working really well. I need to sort it all out. But that is not what we're going to be doing today. Oh, no. In fact, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to put these blocks away, and we're going to go home because I have... Who's it? What? Are they there? They probably are mine. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I've got things to do today which don't involve being here. Having said that, before we go, I am going to grab some redstone from our witch drops because I need... Yeah, I'm going to be doing redstone today. Let's put it that way. Well, I was going to go back to my base and build the flower farm over there, but I'm actually thinking, considering we need this thing to be getting the bone meal anyway, it would make more sense to have it running in this area, and we've got loads of space underneath this thing to actually build it. So, yeah, it's not a bad place to actually do that. Now, I did have three shulker boxes on me. Where's the other one gone? What's happened to the other shulker box? I definitely had three. Oh, have I put it down at my base? Yes, I have. I managed to put it down over here, and as you can see, I have be. been pranked. I believe it was by Lofty and Fantasy Novel. Uh, it says something about someone placed honey on the moon. I guess that's a truly bedrock reference. I'm not really sure I understand it, to be honest with you. And, uh, yeah, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ignore it, pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> right, let's crack on with this hot flower farm. Got things to do, you know. And I'm back over here at Fantasy Novel's Cobblestone Generator because I need cobblestone in order to make redstone components. Now this cobblestone generator, it looks like it's actually been upgraded. There's a lot more hoppers than there were before. It's still not quite getting all of the cobblestone, as you can see there's some floating up there. But there's actually even hoppers underneath the lava bits now, and it is actually pulling some of the cobblestone through that. So that's good, that means the lava's not eating quite so much of the cobblestone as it burns, which is, yeah, that's a good thing. So I quite like this design. And there we go. I've now got plenty of resources in order to make plenty of pistons, and I believe I've already got 12 of them in my redstone box. I've got 13. So I think if we make like 24 pistons, that should be plenty for now, like so. And some observers as well, which means I'm going to need my nether box. So hopefully I've got some nether quartz in here. If not, we're not too far away from the old nether, so we can definitely go and get some. And we do. We've got some nether quartz in there, which is absolutely fantastic. So let's make a whole bunch of observers. I'm probably not going to need all of those observers, but uh, you never go. They will come in handy. And while I'm over in this area as well, look, we're getting sticks from the witch drop. So I'll grab a few of those. We'll make ourselves some redstone torches, some redstone repeaters, and maybe a couple of comparators as well. Then we can just fill up our redstone box just a little bit more, because it is looking a little bit on the empty side. Okay, before we get too far into this, I've come over to my test world to check out how far flowers will spread when they're bone mealed. If you didn't know, on the Bedrock Edition of Minecraft, if you bone meal a flower, a small flower like that, it will always grow and spread the same type of flower, which is absolutely fantastic. What we need to find out is what the maximum spread is to figure out what sort of surface area 
we can, or we need to create. And what I've got is a dispenser just here. If I flick the lever a few times and I can see where the flowers are spreading to. Now, some are going behind the dispensers. So you might think, ah, well, in that case, what would be a really good thing to do is actually put the dispenser underneath the grass block and bone meal through it. The problem with that is at the moment, there's a bug in the game that means when you do that, the game crashes completely and utterly which is not ideal so we're either stuck bone mealing from the side like that and getting the maximum amount of spread that way or potentially we could maybe bone meal from above as well let's see if we can do that let's make a uh, dispenser ah, on top of that one there facing down come on can we do that facing down no nope. not gonna let me oh yeah there we go facing down like that let's put that grass back there let's put a flower there and let's fill that with bone meal let's flick the lever yeah, so we can do it that way. We can have a dispenser above, which is kind of good. And I believe the flowers can still spread if there's a roof over them. Let's just check that out as well. So if I put a roof there and a couple of observers facing into each other on top of that dispenser there and flick the lever off, they're going to keep bow mealing that flower and we'll be able to see the maximum spread from that thing and how far the flowers will actually spread out from there. And it is still going, but it doesn't appear to be spreading a massive amount. But it looks like it's pretty much three out in either, either direction, but as a full square. So we've got three flowers out in either direction, and it's doing a full square, which means it's actually doing a seven by seven area from one dispenser. So we need to figure out what the most optimum positioning in is the dispensers above a 12 by 12 area. And the reason we want a 12 by 12 area, which is basically this thing here is that because yeah, that's what pistons can push pistons can push 12 blocks along so if this is our area we've got one two three four five six seven by one two three four five six seven that's the area that a single dispenser can actually do so there is going to be some overlap so if we have a dispenser there for instance so if we had dispensers in these positions where these white concrete are, we could cover that entire platform and get a pretty decent return. But then we do need some sort of system to actually feed the bone meal into each four of those dispensers evenly, which we could do with a hopper minecart, which wouldn't be too difficult. So let's get back on the world. Oh, I'm Alex. And let's build this thing. So in order to do this, we're going to need a platform of roughly 12 by 12. I mean, it doesn't have to be 12 by 12. It can be 12 by 1 if we want, but 12 wide by a certain amount deep. If we do 12 by 12, it's a nice easy square. The problem is I've only got a little bit of grass and dirt, which is certainly not going to cover the entire area. We need 144 blocks, which is certainly not that. Now we can get dirt and grass by trading with will for cobblestone but we've hardly got any cobblestone either so we need to go back to the cobblestone generator and start getting a decent supply of cobblestone and back here again i've been here quite a while actually while i uh, made myself a cup of coffee and a couple of other bits and bobs and i have now collected over a full sugar box worth of cobblestone, which is absolutely fantastic. So all we need now is Wilf, who I believe, well, last time we saw him he was over at our base, but he might not still be there anymore. <laughs> that was that little Leoda that you just might have caught a glimpse of then. That was actually lofty. And no, he's not here. But we can summon him. We've got summoning block now, so we don't have to go looking for him. But yeah. Here's Lofty look. Lofty in a little Yoda skin. Hello, Lofty. Hope you're alright. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Oh, look, we got a post office. I didn't even know we had a post office. Let's just take a little detour. What's in the post office? Oh, look. Oh, I like this. Is this one of those where... Oh, look, and that's box 99, of course. <laughs> Expert level 99. Oh, there's things in it. More bread. Oh, yes, please. I'll take it. What's that? Toilet paper. Yeah, I need toilet paper. Milk, eggs, fireworks, hand sanitizer. <laughs> very good. Thank you. For and Pim's number one cup. Fantastic. Thank you very much for all of those uh, presents, whoever they were. I will come and collect them when I'm not in the middle of building a flower farm. That's amazing. Thank you. Right. Anyway, let's crack on. Let's go get Wilf and let's go build this flower farm. Jeez, taking ages. I'm not even started yet. Well, this is interesting. I logged out because i got glitched in the portal and when i log back in i'm up here <laughs> cheers game thanks very much mate right will often just spawns around here anyway but it doesn't look like we've been particularly lucky today we're still raining xp over here might as well grab that and let's use one of our summoning blocks now i haven't actually used one of these on camera yet so if you know no idea what this is this is a block with will's face on it that you just basically put down and then all you do is stand on it and boom 
Wilf appears. Amazing. Oh, and he is selling grass. That's good. I was a little bit worried then that he wasn't going to be selling any grass. He is. We'll have as much of that as possible, please, Will. I thought you would have run out by now. There we go. He's finally run out. We've bought out all of his grass. And uh, sea lanterns might be a good thing. We don't really need those. But I am going to take some more diamonds from you, Will. Definitely going to do with some more diamonds. I don't think we need anything else. And there we go, we now have a 12 by 12 grass platform. If we hop up here, we can see that that is a full platform. Very nice, and we have space the, either side there for our piston. So obviously on that side, we just need one, but on this side, we need enough room for them to extend as well. So let's go and grab our pistons, let's get those in place. And very simply, all we need is a row down that side, just like that. And we need a row over this side over here, just like that, very good. And you might notice this area is pretty dark as well. We're gonna probably use sea lanterns to keep the thing lit. We don't want things spawning down here because that will affect the rates of our mob farm. We definitely want this nice and light, but we are gonna have a layer over the top of it because what we're gonna do is have the, yeah, the dispensers and the redstone all above this thing and the collection system below it. So we need to work on that next, I guess. Now, I would actually like to use glass for the top of this. However, sand is in short supply on this server. Again, if we go and see Wilf, we might be able to get some sand from him. But if we, if we do that, so we are going to need a lot of cobblestone again. And no, he's not actually selling sand at the moment. So I think we're going to have to avoid sand for now and just use what we've got. So what we'll do is we'll, get, we'll use some slabs. We'll use some of these cut sandstone slabs and we'll use some sea lanterns. And hopefully... This system's got us a few more sea lanterns well, as it's been running. It appears to have done. Have we got any more in there? We've got a few in there, look. So yeah, we, we'll be able to do this. It won't be quite as fancy, but it'll be fine. So the next thing to do on top of our new flower farm majigger is to add in loads of hoppers. And the reason for that is we're going to have a hopper minecart running around on top of this thing, fi filling those up. And by having two hoppers for every dispenser, that's going to allow two pieces of bone meal into those per turn. Which is, uh, which is, yeah, better. So now we just want a couple of bits of power rail there, and there, and there, and there. And we'll just have some normal rail for the rest of it, like so. There we go. And now we just need to have a few redstone torches to power it. Actually, we don't need to do that. We can just use redstone blocks, which might be certainly not cheaper. Uh, no, we'll, no we, we'll use redstone torches. Absolutely fine. Let's just bring that in a little bit more like that and let's just put some redstone torches on there. So for now, until this thing gets a little bit more established and we have like hopper minecart on loaders and loaders and stuff like that, we're just gonna have a couple of hoppers there and a chest minecart on this thing like that, which is gonna be always going round, it won't cause too much lag, and a double chest on there, which is where we're gonna put our bone meal. Now, if we give that a shove, that's gonna go round and that's gonna unload into each one of those hoppers. So if we fill that chest with bone meal, like so, there we go, that is going to slowly start going through into our chest minecart. Hopefully, oh, does it only pick up one at a time? Oh, we might need, we might need, yeah, we need it to pick up more than one at a time, really. It's only getting one, which means our dispensers are not going to fill up very quickly at all. In which case, then, we need, we do need to use a hopper minecart rather than chest minecart, which was my original plan, but I went away from it. There we go. So if we uh, keep our eye on the hopper minecart as it goes round, we should see. Oh, come on, let me click you, please. There we go. Yeah, it picks up quite a lot of bone meal from that as it goes through. So there we go. That's working pretty well. And it's dropping it all off. Although it's not picking it up as quick as it... Oh, Ooh, it's not picking it up as quick, is it? Hmm. We could almost do with it going slower. Oh, we need a plan B then. And plan B is to come back to our creative test world in order to find something I developed a long time ago, which is a hopper minecart unloader or a chest minecart unloader, which I believe should be around here somewhere. Here we go, look. Chest minecart unloaders, this one. This one is great, although we got a dual one over there. This one's absolutely great. What it does is it takes a chest minecart like that, you pop it on there, it will fill up with items, and once it once it is either full or that chest runs out of items, it will disappear, and then it will go and do the rounds, and it will come back again, and it will wait. So let's just wait for this thing. Which Whichever one's going to happen first, that chest is going to empty first, so let's watch what happens. 
once that chest is fully empty, the hopper minecart disappears. Or like I said, if the actual hopper minecart fills up first, which we can simulate by chucking in some diorite walls into there. And what we'll do is we'll just fill that thing up as much as literally it can be filled up. Like that, it will go. And there we go, that thing is pretty much done. All I've got to do is get rid of this rail at the top now and put that chest back there. And that is 100% done. This thing's so easy. It's literally two comparators, two redstone torches, two pieces of redstone dust, a redstone block, a sticky piston and a fence post. That is it. That is all there is to it. And that is done. So now all we need to do is fill that one with bone meal and then bring that track up here. So we've got to basically have that minecart on a loop to get down there and then back up again, which... I may have not built this in the most easy of places, but we'll see what we can do. And there we go with a little bit of jiggery pokery. We've now got this uh, moved over slightly. I'm not sure if this V is going to work here, so I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to put some bone meal in there. I'm going to put the hopper minecart on there. And it went up and it should go all the way around and then come back down again and get stuck. Of course it gets stuck. Why wouldn't it get stuck? Oh man, start again. And there we go, one more time, and I think that should do it, although I've got a feeling my fence post is not quite in the right position to let the minecart back up. Let's try it, let's make another hopper minecart, let's chuck it down this ramp, and let's actually see if it gets up there. Go on, go. It did. It got up there. Is it getting anything out of the box? No, it's not. Hmm, what have I done wrong? That way, up there. Ah, yeah, look. It needs... Oh, man, I've got to do it. Another block back. Jeez, I can move this thing more times than... <sighs> I've had sliced bread made. Jeez. Nearly there. However, now that I've moved it so many times and I can build this thing off the top of my head, I might as well do a quick tutorial on it. So we're going to start with that block there. And we're going to staircase up until we are three blocks high like that. Then what we're going to do is going to grab a detector rail, put one on the very top there, one there, and then a powered rail at the bottom just below that like that and then we're going to get rid of that detector rail at the top we're going to jump at the top we're going to grab a chest and we're going to jump up and we're going to put another chest over there we're going to grab a solid block and we're going to put it behind our top block there with a comparator on it and out the front of that comparator we are going to have another solid block like that we're going to put a block underneath that one and a block there and we're going to break that block that's underneath it. We're then going to put another block in front of that one. We're going to put a redstone torch on the block that's in front of the comparator and a redstone torch on that block there. And we need a little bit of redstone dust just on top of that one there. Then we're going to get a block of redstone and another smooth block. We're going to put a block there like that. And we're going to put a redstone block there and get rid of that one. Another piece of redstone dust on top of that redstone block. Another block there like that. And then we are going to use another comparator sticking out of there. This comparator reads the items that are in the hopper minecart through that block. That one reads the items coming out of the chest directly. And then all we need is our sticky piston, which we're going to stick facing away from that torch there. And our fence gate there. And that, I believe, is job done. So if we put some bone meal in that chest that piston will come across now all we need to do is actually just attach that with a little bit more powered rail there and now we can bring that bit down like so and we're just going to put a normal piece of rail at the bottom like that to join those because we do not want those bits of rail interfering with each other now i'm hopeful that this is actually going to work so let's stick a little bit more bone meal in there let's make one more hopper minecart let's chuck it around our circuit at the top to make it do a lap first and just make sure it's going to work properly coming back all on its own so off it goes it's going to go around it's going to come back i'm going to jump over it's going to go down there it's going to no ah of course these hop up these rails are not lit okay yeah that's fine what i'm going to do then is i'm going to put another detector rail at the very bottom there and that means as the hopper minecart comes up there it's actually going to hit that and force that yeah it's going to hit that and turn that one on. Does that make sense? So if we now put that down there, it should. Do as you're told. Hit that, turn that one on. There we go. And now it's at the top. Hooray! We finally did it. Now we should hopefully see that empty out what's in the chest and then disappear back up again. Let's see if it does it. Is it going to do it successfully? Let's go up the stairs. Go on. On your marks. Get set. Go. It's going around. It's doing a full lap. Should be emptying its goods into those hoppers and coming back again. Mm, now, the only thing is, we don't really want it to come all the way back unless it's empty. 
which is going to be a tricky thing to do. We could put a detector on there so that when the hopper minecart is empty, that actually switches that rail there. That's doable. But for now, let's just see how we get on with this thing. And now, as you can see, I have all of the track laid out underneath the grass. This is going to be where two hopper minecarts are actually coming in and out. As you can see, I've got one bit of track that does that half, one bit of track that does that half. And the reason for that is we're going to be needing to collect flowers pretty quickly from this. It's going to be a fast farm, so we're going to need to double up our item collection. Now, technically, this bit here and that bit there can be bounced back because so they don't need to keep coming back. So, I, don't, I think... Hmm. Yeah, we should maybe have the collection system in the middle and the bounce backs at the side. Now, the system we used on Truly Bedrock was actually really complicated, and I've just come up with this, which seems to be working, but I'm a little bit hesitant. The reason being is normally you have at least a couple of powered rails at that end to slow the hopper minecart enough so it doesn't bounce back. But if we put some flowers in there, you'll see it does stop. The comparator will be reading the hopper having something in, once that's cleared, it goes off again. So that's working, and that's really simple. In fact, we don't even need that hopper there. We need two hoppers and a comparator and a redstone torch. Very easy. Right, let's try build it on the world and see if it works. Okay, according to science, this should do the job. I've only wired up one side. I just want to make sure it's actually going to work first. So let's put our hopper minecart down there. And let's give it some stuff to pick up. Let's give it... 14 slabs to pick up on its way back and see if this actually works because I'm not convinced this is actually going to do the job. We'll find out in a second. Come on, come back. Come pick it up, mate. Oh, and you can do it. Is it going to work? Oh, kind of. Kind of. See, we had the bounce back issue then, but it, oh, and it doesn't quite get going again. Nearly. We've got a couple of power rails there this time. Let's see if that's enough to actually slow it down and stop it. It might actually make the whole thing worse. We'll find out in a second. Let's do this. Come on. And it's in. It's unloading. Has it got enough oomph to go back again? It has. That worked. Perfect. Brilliant. Okay. Let's have two of them then. Okay. In terms of redstone, I believe that's all I need to do. Having said that, that is inverted. That doesn't want to be inverted. There we go. Now that's all we need to do. What we got here is four hoppers all pointing into each other in a clock like that. On one side, we've got a comparator coming out to these pistons. On the other side, we've got a comparator going out to those pistons. And I've just noticed that the comparator strength is not quite strong enough. So we could probably do it with another repeater there, which means we need to have another repeater on this side as well. Off this comparator, there is a redstone torch coming up to there. So basically, when there's an item in this one, that row will fire. Then it will move to that side. That row will fire. And then it will move to this side and the flowers will grow. Yeah, it should be a pretty good system, really. However, I am tempted to do something else, to, give, to double this up a little bit, to give us a little bit more growth. What we could potentially do here is to move this redstone around. Whoa, around oh, dear. I've started it off. I need a lever and I need an observer. And I have both of those in this box. But there you go. You can see it's actually uh, doing something. The... The grass is shifting. You can't see it because the pattern's not changing. But yeah, the grass is shifting. That's working. I don't want it on yet. So uh, please just stop for a second, if you wouldn't mind, mate. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to add another block there. So the, the comparator actually reads through that block. Now, instead of having that comparator going into anything, I'm going to have an observer looking at it, which then means if we put a piece of redstone dust on there and a repeater in front of that there, that should now fire twice every time the item goes into that hopper, which means we'll get a double hit on our dispensers, which means we'll get it firing twice, which means we'll get twice as many flowers. Now, nothing's happening at the moment because there's no flowers there, but technically this system, technically this system should work really well. So let's try it. Let's grab some flowers and let's see if we can actually make this work. I bet you all thought about it, didn't you? I bet you all realised in the chat, what a moron you are, Foxy Hotel. You're a complete moron. Yes, I am. It has just occurred to me from trialling this thing for the first time that the flowers that we actually plant to actually grow are going to disappear because the floor is shifting, which we absolutely do not want. We want the flowers to stay there. And now there is an easy way to do that. We just need to lift this entire dispenser section up by one block and have the flowers raised up a block. I completely forgot about that. I tried it. 
and it uh, it worked, but it failed. The other way we could do it is we could just literally uh, stop one section of the... We could stop two rows of the grass blocks from being broken, but I kind of think that's a... Yeah, that's a bad idea. Let's just raise this entire section up by one block. Oh, jeez. And there we go. That took practically no time at all to rejigger about, so that should hopefully work now. Now what I can do is actually... Put some more grass blocks up here underneath those dispensers and fire them from a block above. Now that will potentially reduce their overall range down a little bit, but I don't think it will have too much of a negative effect, so let's try it at least. What? It's firing on that one. Why are these ones not firing? See, that that actually made one. There are not many though. Oh, this is, this is not good at all. This is bad. And I have lowered it all again, put it back to pretty much how it was, and I've removed the pistons in the areas that are going to knock the flowers off, which means that all of these grass spawnable place spaces are now dead, which is going to lower our rates quite a bit, which is very frustrating. But the only other way we could have done this would have been to have the dispensers on the side, and then we'd lose any of the spawnable spaces behind them as well. So it will kind of still work well, just hope not quite as well as I'd hoped. I've also added in another two hoppers per dispenser, so there's now hoppers the whole way around this, just to double up how fast the bone meal can actually get inside the dispenser. And if we go and break this sea lantern here, we can break that one because there's nothing important on top of it. You can see that the, uh, yeah, they're getting four pieces of bone meal every time the hopper minecart does a lap now instead of just two, which is going to allow this to run a little bit longer. Now, I would still like a system in place where the hopper minecart keeps going round until it's fully unloaded, which I don't think would be too difficult considering we've made an unloader down there and it's kind of just the opposite. So we just need to invert the signal coming out, but then we'd have to work out how we're going to make it work with all the track being all spun around and stuff. And yeah, that's complicated. I'm going to do that later off camera. But for now, oh, I didn't want to click on that. Let's actually test this thing and see if it's going to work. Oh, man. It's the moment of truth, peeps. If it don't work now, it ain't never gonna. Let's do this. Aha! Flowers! Lots of flowers! Wow, look at that. Okay, so we're not obviously getting the ones breaking on the uh, areas <laughs> that we're not pushing, but otherwise we're getting a lot of flowers. We look. This lo thing looks like this a reasonable amount. Now, we could speed this up if we was to change this clock to a faster clock and just tweak the timing slightly, but this clock will be completely lag proof for the the server because only one bit can fire at once it's not relying on observers it's not re relying on repeater timings it will not be affected by server lag so that's why i've opted for this design and also with it being a bit slower it means that it's got time for the flowers to actually get collected and it means the server doesn't have to work too hard to actually run the thing meaning it's not going to cause too much of a problem for other players that are on such as big chicken there we go there's a slight problem oh no it's just what? What are you doing? What are you doing? You're acting all crazy, mate. Okay, after running this thing for a relatively short amount of time, you can see we've already got absolutely tons of flowers, but the problem is I've had to turn it off and not be just because this hopper minecart unloader is problematic, but also it's way too slow. Way too slow. We're getting way more flowers up there. We've hardly even really used any bone meal as well. If we check that chest, we've hardly used any at all. Yeah, the, um, this system's too slow, so we're going to need a faster unloader system, which is going to take me back to my idea as well, because I've got a plan. Well, I've got something relatively interesting going on here, but what I have noticed is that the hopper minecarts do not like being sat next to each other. It actually makes them both want to move, which is something I haven't seen since the Java Edition beta versions of Minecraft, as in, like, Many, many years ago, hopper minecarts used to in interact in this weird sort of way. But yeah, if you've got hopper minecarts right next to each other, it pushes one lot, which is not the correct behavior. So we're going to have to actually pull these away from each other. But if we just take one away for now and look at what we've got going on, we've actually got a another hopper minecart glitched inside the hopper, which should, if we actually put some... No, come back. Stop. <laughs> we put some stuff in there and then look at it as it's unloading, it'll unload a lot faster, which means that it can get back on its journey again. And there we go, that is everything put together on the actual world, and I keep saying realm rather than server, which is uh, slightly confusing, but it's okay. And I've doubled up the chests as well, so we've got four now altogether, 
that should make a big, big difference. What is really concerning at the moment, though, is this thing has been running non-stop and it's, it's full again. So we definitely need a better storage system here, but let's not worry about that right now. Let's worry about our flower farm. Let's get it turned back on now that it's had all of this time to actually recharge. And let's see how we get on with it. So as soon as we flick that lever there, it's going to start making us lots of flowers. And dropping redstone, apparently. Where did that redstone just drop from? Who knows? <laughs> There we go, look at that, draining those flowers out of there very, very quickly. That's loads better. Car nearly there, nearly there, nearly there, and it goes again. Brilliant, that's amazing. That's absolutely fantastic, and that one as well, very good. Well, it turns out that my amazing hopper unloader system is fatally flawed. So I've built yet another one, which we'll go into in detail in the moment. First of all, I would just like to say thank you to Lofty, and I believe it was the bearded swine as well, who's dropped me off a load of bone meal and bone blocks, which is absolutely fantastic, so that we can get this thing built up. But yeah, the problem we had with the old unloader, let's go back to the test world and look at it. So can you see the fatal flaw in this design? Yes, it is the fact that the hopper minecart does not have a hopper underneath it. So it will suck out all of the items from the top of minecart at the top. But as soon as it's full, it's not going to go anywhere. It doesn't actually drain off and do anything. So it's completely pointless. So what I did is I built this, which is very reminiscent of the hopper minecart unloader we're using. But what it's actually doing is it's taking the items from that hopper minecart through this block into this hopper minecart, which sucks them out really quickly. And then it will transfer them through these main hoppers into these chests at the front. Now that hopper there does cause the entire thing to have a big slowdown or a bottleneck so it's not ideal still but it's still faster on the first couple of times and what all of this does this just detects how many items are in the actual hopper minecart and once it's empty it will go off again rather than waiting for the hopper underneath to have emptied so if we set that off that should be full of bone meal that's all going to transfer through very quickly into this one here through that block. And then as soon as that's empty, that will disappear back off again and go loading. And you can see that everything is then transferring through this hopper at the bottom and it's going into that chest there. So there is a bottleneck. It's still not as fast as it could be. And this design will work great if it takes longer for this hopper minecart to fill up than it does for that one to empty out. But sadly, that's not the case on our flower farm. And what that means is that we can't run our flower farm for very long before the system backs up, which is fine because, as you will see when running this thing, we get that many flowers from it that it actually fills up so quickly that, yeah, we, don't, we really don't need to run it for a very long time at all to get an absolute ton of flowers. And you'll see now when the hopper minecarts come back in a second, they're gonna wait there, they're gonna empty those out they're going to drop those into the hopper minecarts below, which is these ones here, and they are going to then drop those into the hopper. And the hopper minecarts above again are going to come back while there's probably still flowers in there. Although that's managed to completely empty out, which is great. Let's have a look what happens the next time it comes back through again. Here it comes. It's going up. What's in it this time? Yeah, it's a little bit more full this time. So this one's going to uh, slowly feed those through there. Once that's emptied out, it's going to disappear again. And all of these are going through into this chest. And as you can see, we've got absolutely tons in this chest here. And we've got absolutely tons in all of these chests as well. So this system, although have, has hardly been run at all, maybe for five minutes tops, we're getting absolutely tons and tons of flowers from it. So we're really not going to need to run it for a long time. Now let's see how many flowers are still in here by the time that comes back again. There's going to be quite a lot. So you can see this thing is going to backlog relatively quickly. Which is not ideal, but you know, that's just how it is. That's just the way it is. Anyway, I'm going to turn this farm off now because I've got plenty of flowers already. I don't need to go crazy with it. And I'm going to say on that note, thank you all very much for watching this video. I do hope you liked it. I hope you found it informative. And if you would like me to put together maybe a little bit more of a succinct and useful tutorial on this type of flower farm, please do let me know on my Discord and in the comments below. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do please leave a like. If you haven't already, please do subscribe.